Hi, welcome to the truth of Tal and Isaac. I'm Tal. And I'm Isaac. Welcome to the truth. Episode number 18, uh, NBA off uh, mid-season awards, NFL news, and we're going to do some more movie athlete swaps. That's kind of a fun little crossover topic that we'd like to do. But let's start off the top. Uh, Myers Leonard, stupid, dumb. I don't know if you're just a racist jerk or an idiot. Either way, terrible. But if you haven't seen Julian Edelman's reach out to him, have you seen it? Yeah. Awesome. And I hope uh, I hope he reaches out to him, make, make some amends. What's uh, going to happen to him? So I like Myers a lot. Like, he was a solid player for Miami last year. A huge Heat fan, right? Uh, Jimmy, in turn, a Heat fan. <laughs> but uh, he was good and had a really good role in the team. And Miami signed him. For two years, 20 mil, which is a lot of money for him. And uh, there's a team option. So I don't know if they're going to hang on to him and then let him go at the end of this year. But he's out for the year, right? He's been injured basically all season. So I don't really know what's going to happen. Like, I don't know if they release him. He's a good player, and there's going to be teams that are going to, like, he would be huge on a team like Dallas or Golden State. Like, he would have a big role mm-hmm. on a, a team like that, even going back to Portland. So I don't know. Uh, he's a big boost with a decent amount of skill yeah I, shut his mouth like I know he streamed a lot and when you stream I, you, what's streaming dad do you know when you stream when you're online and you like do stuff yeah like video games alright I'll take that yep. um, he streamed a lot and it's really hard to. that's why we don't do the shows live even though we do one take but like he'll say something stupid or I'll say something dumb so he, he kneels for the anthem right uh, so people kind of lost their minds about that Pretty sure because like his brother either served or died serving. Like he has a, a he a kneeled for the anthem and people oh, made a big deal. No, opposite. At, when everyone was kneeling in the bubble, okay. all right, he stood and and people kind of caused a stir. But uh, you know, hope he can get smarter and take that away from his vocabulary. Here's an opportunity for him to use his platform, own up, apologize, and see how he can make amends. He did an apology, but it's weak. No, it's some publicist, yeah. like a real apology. Yeah. Uh, NCAA tournament coming up. Uh, Big Ten tourneys right now. Uh, man, Selection Sunday, Sunday is uh, coming up, and that's always fun. It's a great tournament. And I think Michigan could not win any more games, and Jawan Howard should still be the coach of the year. Yeah, I agree. For yeah. sure. I, I think he's solidified he's coach of the year. Big Ten, he won. There's really no surprise there. Uh, he's got, like, I don't know. I can't think of another guy who's more deserving. Realistically, how much NCAA do we follow other than Michigan? Okay, but look... So who are the teams that are up there? Gonzaga. Gonzaga They've Baylor. had the same dude for like as long as I can remember. Yeah. Baylor probably has the same guy they've had for a long time, right? Howard's in his legit first year. They, yeah. They'll say last second year. Didn't even year. really count, but last year didn't count. It's awesome. The the future of Michigan is bright. Yeah. Uh, NBA All Star Game. It sucks. Like the only thing that's interesting is the three point contest. I didn't watch any of the game or any of the dunk contest. I watched. The end of skills, and I watched uh, all the three-point. We're not talking about Queen stuff. It's stupid. Um, I think everybody in the royal family kind of sucks. Can we... That, that's not our stick. It's not our target market? No, no. Really? Sorry, guys. Okay. Wrong podcast if you wanted to get some <laughs> Queen content. <laughs> um, I, like, if the All-Star game doesn't happen, do you even care? No. Like... To be totally honest, I probably wasn't going to watch. And then Jimmy got snubbed, and I'm like, okay. Like, I have no point in watching um, a bunch of guys that I know are really good do things that are really cool. Like, I, I don't have anything to gain where it's three-point. There's legit, like, competition. There's no competition in the All-Star game. In the dunk contest, there is, but... Who are they? Yeah, you got, like, you got to throw some money at Zion to get him in that, because I would have watched yeah, but they've been talking about that for years. The good guys haven't cared about the dunk contest for at least a decade. So I, thought, I think Zion will do one. No. For sure. Oh, 10 bucks. By the Ooh. end of his career, Zion will do one dunk contest? They need uh, The only way it's going to happen is if he convinces a couple of big guys to do it with him. So was that a yes to my bet or no? I'll take that bet because I'm happy losing 10 bucks if they do run it. Yeah. Uh, what else did I miss off the top? Um, nothing. Blake Griffin we'll talk about later. Okay. Signed with the Nets. Oof. Yeah, we're not happy. Um, NFL news. Pretty interesting week. Um, so let's just talk about some of the guys who did get franchised. 
Allen Robinson, Chris Godwin, a couple of big wide receivers. Uh, Cam Robinson from Jacksonville, who I don't think is very good, is he? I guess they just need somebody to not let yeah, we get a bunch of cat. Uh, Lawrence get uh, killed. Uh, Marcus Williams is safety from New Orleans, and, and I didn't look into this at all, but they're like $60 million over the cap, but then they sign this guy. So is this just to secure him and then sign him to a 10-year deal? I have no idea. I, New Orleans, what they do the next couple months will be really interesting because I have zero idea. Like, obviously the Breeze situation, but the whole cap situation and, like, who's going to leave. And Michael Thomas, like, got into a fight. Remember all that? Like, yep. do they still hate each other? Is he going to leave? So I don't know. it'll be interesting. Uh, a couple guys that were not tagged uh, that'll be interesting, and we'll talk about Galladay in a minute. <clears throat> Aaron Jones running back from Green Bay. Chris Carson, another running back. Shaquille Griffin, uh, another uh, Seahawk. Hunter Henry, who I think is solid. Uh, tight end from the Chargers. And Jonu Smith, another tight end from the Titans. We are going to talk. The two guys that I want to talk about is uh, Galladay and Prescott. I think are the two, like... Uh, we'll touch on Robinson. I'd like to talk a bit about Robinson. Sure. This is not good for the Lions. This basically shows me that they are going to make a really legit run at uh, I Russell think Wilson. Wilson or Watson. I think Wilson is more likely, mm-hmm. which is I don't want to face Wilson twice a year. No. Listen, we'll flip it into uh, uh, talk in a second with Dak because Dak's not a top 10 quarterback. He's close. Yeah, he's, he's right on. Like, yeah. You could debate that he's eight or nine or whatever. Mm-hmm. But we'll list a bunch of guys that are better than him. Um, but I agree with Allen Robinson. Signing means they're either going to use him as part of the trade for oh. Russ, or that's part of the deal to get him and give him some weapons. Yeah, Russ needs a guy like Robinson who is who's good. Maybe the most underrated Oof. receiver. Actually, Terry McLaurin is the most underrated receiver in football. It's the guy and from then, Washington. For Washington, and then yep. Robinson. Uh, but it, it's not good for the Lions. I think it's really bad, and uh, I love Wilson, and I want him to be happy, but I don't want to play him twice a year. No. no, thank you. You want to talk about Dak first? Yeah, we'll start with Dak. Okay. Off the bat, good for him. Uh, he's a really good dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, like if you do any reading or watch anything, he's a really good guy and is a good story, and for that, I root for him. I did not want him to stay in Dallas at all. Because I hate Dallas and I hate the Cowboys and hate Jerry Jones. I really wanted him to go and take a pay cut. And we'll talk about taking a pay cut and play for San Francisco. Like, I think that would have been really cool to see him in San Francisco. So the four-year deal was interesting because I would have assumed that he would have signed a longer deal. But uh, Kevin Ewing mentioned to me that, uh, shout out Kevin, prison rules. Four-year deal is probably the time when the NFL contract is going to get signed again, so it's going to yeah. go crazy. So he will theoretically be a free agent when the uh, salary cap goes up by a ton. So who won, Dak or the Cowboys? So I don't. I think Dak won by a mile. I don't think there's a debate. I think Dak won, and again, I like him, but I. I here's the problem: he's not a franchise quarterback on his own. He needs a lot of support. Yeah. But if you let him go, then you're scrambling. Then you're kind of rebuilding, and Dallas doesn't want to rebuild. So I completely blame Jerry Jones for this. Like, he's such a moron. It's he's unbelievable how yeah. terrible of a GM or an owner or whatever it is. He's awful at his job, or yeah. all of them. Like, you pay Zeke. Uh, Zeke in his prime was a beast. Like, when Dak was a uh, rookie second-year guy, Zeke ran the offense. Like, Zeke was their best player on offense by mm-hmm. a lot. And he was a top five for, uh, back in the league, even though I never liked him. In his prime, he was. And they went all in on the running back rather than the mid, mid-round mid quarterback steal, which was a bad decision. And then they paid Amari Cooper, which I see them paying Amari Cooper. That makes more sense to me than paying Zeke because it's a wide receiver and he's not a complete bozo who gets fat every offseason. Yeah. So you sign those two guys... I still would have, like, the value they had on Dak, the average uh, they, they've paid him was $7 million for the years they've had him. It was like a mil and then 600 k 900 k that kind of thing. And then they tagged him last year. He made, like, 30-plus mil. So when you average that out, I think they paid him around 7 or $8 mil a year. That's great value for a guy like Dak because it's quarterback and you pay a billion for quarterback. 
And uh, I think they made the wrong decision paying those guys before him. But I don't completely blame the Cowboys um, because they took a chance on him. They're the only team that saw anything in him and took a risk with him. Mm -hmm. So Dallas did that part right, but they did everything after that wrong, I think. What do you what do you got? So I'm just writing down quarterbacks that if I had to pick a quarterback for the next two years ahead of Dak, right? Mahomes, easy. Wilson, yes. Watson, yes. Herbert? Not I yet. say yes. Not yet. Okay, I say yes. Trevor Lawrence, it's hard to say, it's a question mark. Joe Burrows? Uh singular. There's only one of them. Joe Burrow. Joe but, Burrow. Uh I need more. Okay. Lamar? Yeah. Okay. Brady. Two years? Yeah. Yeah. Um, who's the dude from Buffalo? Um, Allen? You say Rodgers as much as I hate him? Yep. You gotta put down Rodgers. Um, who else is up there? I think that's probably it. So right? one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for sure, and a couple maybes. Jared Goff? <laughs> uh, no. Matt rather, Stafford, you can debate. Stafford, Stafford I think I pick, I, I, Stafford. I pick Stafford ahead of uh, Dak. So he's borderline top 10. So he's like 9, 10, 11, somewhere in that. A lot of money. Listen, I don't think Dallas had a chance. Uh, sorry, Dallas had a choice because they let no. him go. Then they're playing Chase Daniels or somebody like that. Yeah. But it'd be interesting to see how this plays out. So he's the second highest paid quarterback in the NFL. Next year, he's ba- making all of his money. There's a bunch of salary cap goofiness that Jones did, which I think was actually pretty decent. But regardless, they're paying him a ton. Uh, yeah, but here's the deal. Wait two years, and there will be ten guys make more money than him. Yeah, I know we say that all the time, right? Like when yeah. Matt Ryan got his big deal. Um, but the signing bonus that he got, largest in NFL history, that was kind of for the cap thing. Um, I like Dak a lot, which is why I'm kind of upset that he stayed, because I want to root for him and root for his team. Which is why, like if he went to San Fran, I thought that would have been sweet. Or uh, Washington, I thought that would have been sweet. Which shirt are you wearing? Uh, it's an Amherst Phys Ed shirt. Did you go to Amherst? Don't worry about it. I got to get. I thought you went to Holy Names. I, don't worry about it. Okay. Uh, so I like Dak a lot, but he, uh, he hasn't won uh, big games. Like when they play above 500 playoff teams, he has not done well. Uh, like statistically, historically, like he does not have a good record against good teams. Beats up on a lot of bad teams and he's a good uh, like floor general. He's a good captain, but uh, he's not a guy. He's not a Mahomes. He's not a guy you go all in on, which is what they did. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, be interesting to hear what happens with the Cowboys in a couple years. Let's talk about uh, Kenny G, not the singer, the wide receiver, former Detroit Lion, super talented, often injured. Good move or bad move by the Lions? Great move. Okay. I don't, we haven't really talked about it. No. Um, I like Galladay a lot, and I think he's a very, very good wide receiver. But he's injured a lot, and right, like I don't want to pay him 18 mil a year. So... Maybe you know this, maybe you don't. Franchise is the average of the top five people at the position. Is that right? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't Some, know. Top five or top ten. I know there's a couple of different names for it, but like from a talent perspective, I think he is close to top five, but he just doesn't have a track record of, of, of being healthy. And realistically, the Lions would probably be over the cap if they signed him. And I think I heard they offered him some money, like some decent money. I think it was a like Phoenix, no. right? I thought I was in that range, 15, I 16. I, I think I read 18. So he wants more. Maybe that's why I wrote 18. And so if maybe I read he wants it more. on Instagram, it's got to be true, right? Yeah, if you read it on the internet, I think it's true. That's okay. a stat I read on the internet. Okay, so, so it's true. Got to be true. There's a little paradox for it. Um, the, the bad thing with it is golf right now is screwed. Oh, yeah. Like, you are so pissed His off. His best wide receiver is TJ Hawkinson. Yeah, he has Hawkinson and Swift. Cephas, the dude who I like yeah, from like Wisconsin. And he was the other tall guy, well, they, Tyrell something. Well, they just got Tyrell Williams. Yeah, Tyrell Williams. Um, and I don't know, Emmanuel Sanders got released today by the Saints, right? Bad contract, he's older. Pick him up, too, for a couple years. They, they like so if they can't trade down, they may pick one of the wide receivers. Uh, yeah, with right. If they pick. pick Jamar Chase at seven, then Goff will be okay. Because yeah. you get a guy like that, or even Smith or Waddle, like any three of them. Um, I actually, I would not mind if they traded down a little and got... Parsons or that other linebacker at a Notre Dame who's a beast. I think that'd be really mm-hmm. cool. Um, but 
Man, Goff is so screwed right now. They need lots of guys on defense, and right now they don't have. Uh, they got a, one good running back, and then a half decent backup. Good tight end. They got a couple of good offensive linemen. Mm-hmm. Wide receivers is super tight right now because no Jones, no Galladay. Uh, Amendola. Do we get him? Amendola. Back? I almost said, almost said Amadeo. Shout out Amadeo. So, Amadeo is not happy with this. Buddy of mine, good listener of the show, really wanted them to keep Galladay or. Give him money or whatever. We disagree a bit on it. Sorry, Dale. I think it was the right move. The Lions. It's a rebuilding year. So where do you think slash want Galladay to go? Well, you know, let's talk about the obvious places that need wide receiver. Who comes Baltimore. first? Baltimore. Baltimore, New England are the first two places that come to my mind. Uh, Baltimore. I w- I really want him to go to Baltimore, but actually, like if I can pick the team he goes to, it's probably Indy. They have a ton of cap. And can pay him. But I like Wentz a lot. I want to see Wentz win. <laughs> yeah. um, and it'd be sweet if Wentz could throw to Galladay. But Galladay, like I wrote down Philly, wrote down the Jets, wrote down the Dolphins, New England. Yeah, Philly. Philly would be cool. Yeah. I like Philly. You know who's underrated? Nelson? Nelson Aguilar. Uh, Aguilar. Um, is that it for NFL talk? Do you have anything else? Uh, that's all I got for, for NFL stuff. Want to jump into some uh, NBA talk? Yeah. Blake, first you want to do our... Uh, Blake. Blake. So we like Blake. Blake, you tried hard for us. Detroit, Windsor, thank you very much. Man, the Nets. Like, here's the problem. I really wanted to cheer for you, but I hate the Nets more than I hate the Lakers. I'd so I am it. now... Oh, boy. So if Lakers, Nets are in the finals. I told him if the Lakers, Nets are in the finals... I'm boycotting. Watching golf? I'm, yeah, I'm not going to watch. I'll just go watch like X-Men or something. Like I'm not going to watch two teams I do not like. Uh, I don't want to watch two super teams. Like last year, we had the Lakers, but we had a team that was not a super team, right? When Toronto won, Toronto was not a super team. Golden State was. I don't want to see two super teams, right? Like if there's a non-super team and a super team and the super team wins, that's fine. But if you have two super teams, I do not want to watch that. Mm-hmm. Unless Steph Curry's playing. <laughs> I like Steph. <laughs> he's so much fun to watch. Oh, my God. That three-point contest was amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a cheat code. Cheat that's, code. That's, 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 that's a good description. Uh, I wanted... I said, Do you want me to explain to you what that means? You got it? I know a cheat code. Okay. Thanks. All right. All right. Uh, I, I said to on the show, I want Blake to go anywhere, not Brooklyn, not LA. Anywhere else, I'll be happy. And he has to pick, like, Brooklyn... First of all, this doesn't put Brooklyn over the edge. Do you agree? People are going nuts about it. Like, I like Blake a lot, but unless he has just made a little bit more of a recovery in the last three weeks, he just doesn't have much left. Mm-hmm. Like they talked about him being small ball five, and depends on who they're playing, but like Bam is going to freaking run by him and well, laugh at him. Let's talk about... Is he going to guard him beat? Let's no, talk about him beat. Are you kidding me? Lopez... Lopez is going to eat him up? Dude. Lopez? Lopez will eat him up. Oh, my God. No, that's, we're not having that. That's stupid. Yeah, Sideshow Bob, Lopez. That's not going to happen. Which one? Like, one both. of them's a caveman. Yes. Are they both cavemen now? One both for sure is a caveman. Um, I wanted him to, to go anywhere, not Brooklyn or LA. It sucks. Brooklyn is definitely not winning the finals. And... Oh, listen. Brooklyn could still win. No. Listen, no. Harden can flat out score... Kyrie, as much as he's a head case, if his head is into it, finishes better than anybody in the league. Yeah, I agree. Um, and can make big shots. And KD is a guy who cannot be stopped. If he's yeah. healthy. So let's just, as Blake is not relevant, if Brooklyn's top three is healthy, they win. Okay. Physically healthy, yes. Mentally healthy. They have two morons yep. on their team. Yeah. And the chances that both of them are able to not be morons, I think are slim. One of them is going to be dumb. I Maybe heard, both. I heard Kyrie took his vacation to lower his trade value in case they were thinking about trading him. Which isn't surprised because he's a goofball. Is that real? Do you read that? It's probably I heard, real. I, uh, Simmons or Woj or one of those podcasts. Um, look, Brooklyn maybe is making out of the East. We'll talk about that in future episodes. Yep. I think I still like Philly right sure. now, but... Uh, they're not beating the Lakers in the finals. No way. No way. All right, let's jump into our awards at this point of the season. <clears throat> All-star break. MVP. Top three, who do you got? 
the guy I just talked about, it's Embiid by a mile. No one is close to Embiid right now. Um, he has been so dominant. And awesome. when you talk about most valuable, everybody has different definitions, right? Last year, uh, Chris Paul, in my opinion, was in the conversation because he made that rebuild team a playoff team mm-hmm. that almost uh, won the first round. So if you take Embiid off Philly, they are a bad team. They just don't really have much of an offense. They can still play defense, but they don't have much of an offense. So he is so valuable to them, where if you take LeBron off the Lakers, AD is And pretty, AD is healthy. And AD is healthy. Yeah. That's a, that's a better ball club. Oh, you still have Trez, still have uh, Schroeder. You got yeah, a Schroeder's bunch of guys, good. right? Wes Matthews, Kuzma, I like a lot. Matthews. Crusoe. So, Crusoe's awesome. Uh, really, really I, I think Embiid has to have it by a mile. Two, I'll, I'll put Jokic at two. Um, he's like he's the only reason why the the Nuggets are where they are. Is it, you have Dame time? Yeah, you have Dame at two. <clears throat> You're gonna we're gonna disagree here. Actually, I have LeBron at two, and most not because I necessarily think, but I, I think this is what they people really want to give him an MVP because yeah. he's played all year. If I had to predict now, <clears throat> and be just like he had that one beast game, yeah, we watched it. Yeah. Um, so I've got Embiid. One, I have LeBron, two, I have Damon, three. Wow. And I have Jokic just missing out. Okay. That's, I have Embiid, one, for <clears> sure. <throat> I have Jokic, two, for sure. Three, there's a debate. LeBron has a conversa- has a has a say. Steph Curry does. Mm-hmm. And Dame does. Those mm-hmm. are the guys. And then, like, on the outskirts, Luka, uh, as much as I hate him, Harden, because uh, he's been really good in Brooklyn. Kawhi is still there. Giannis is still there. But it's it's Embiid and Jokic right now. It's battle of the big men. Uh Embiid far away, so there's not a lot of debate. Most improved, we're going to have a bit of debate here. <clears throat> Actually, we might have debate. It might be the rest of the league uh, that has a debate. So I have Grant as the most improved. Uh, Randall as number two. And then, uh, I'm not sure, Levine or Boucher at three. I think I go with Boucher. So I, it's Grant. Uh, the only guy that has a case over Grant, and you didn't mention him, and a lot of people aren't, it's Jokic. If you look at, statistically speaking, Jokic has basically everything has skyrocketed. Um, points, points, points assists, rebounds, all, assists. Everything shooting. So I have Jokic at two, and I think he has a conversation. Like, I think if someone told me they have Jokic over Grant, I would get it. Uh, Randall, I don't get. Like, I don't think Randall is more improved than either of those two. So I have Grant, Jokic, and three, you can say Randall. I would actually put Boucher. I put Boucher at three, and then like I put Sexton down. Like he's been great. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jalen Brown is having a bigger role. It's still, the reason like I didn't think he was going to be most improved from the beginning because he was great last year. Yeah. And Jokic was great last year, but now he's like MVP. Brown was great last year, and now he's All Star. So the they both jump. improve, but yeah, uh, bigger for Jokic. Okay, I think because Randall plays in New York, and because New York has made a jump in the standings. He probably wins it, even though we think Grant. And just think about it for a second. Everybody thought Denver's going to make a big jump this year. Kind of showed how good uh, Grant uh, was. Obviously, he didn't get as many touches on offense, so he didn't have the stats. But Grant's a good player. I think he's lucky to have him. Uh, Defensive. We're going to disagree here for sure. Okay. So You have the the bum? I have the Stifle Towers as number one. Okay. Uh, Listen, I don't watch a lot of Utah, but he really affects a lot of things, I have Simmons as a close two, and I have Bam at three. Okay, I like that. Simmons is one. I have Simmons as one. Simmons is awesome. Simmons can guard just about anybody on the floor. Um, and an insider uh, was telling me from the beginning of the year that Simmons might be defense player of the year, and I buy it. I have Simmons one now. Uh, two, I actually like. I want to put Embiid at two because Embiid has been great defensively. But I'll give you Gobert at two, and then you can put Embiid three. But, like, Bam has been great. I actually saw Jimmy on a list online that was from, like, CBS. I was legit. It wasn't me. Um, I have Giannis. DeJounte Murray for San Antonio. People don't know that name. DeJounte Murray is going to be awesome. He's good. Yeah, He's you know, be we were watching so awesome. him a couple weeks ago. And you're like, watch this dude, and he is athletic as hell. He's going to win Defense Player of the Year. Yeah. He's a guard. He's not going to win this year. But he will win a defense player there. Lots of all defense teams for this kid. And San Antonio, he's awesome. Cool. Rookie? Um, ball. None of us like ball. Like, it's, Listen, it, it, if his dad isn't wasn't such an ass, I think there wouldn't have been as big a target on him. But 
Paul's been great. He's leading rookies in points, rebounds, and assists. He's a he's a player. Like initially they weren't guarding him, so they were wide open threes. Now they're guarding him. He's just backing up three or four steps. He's still hitting them. So you, you got him. In the first maybe first podcast we've ever done, maybe it was like top. It was the first few. We did not rookie of the year, which is like I don't really know what that means because you made that up. And who I did think you I put? made it up. Who I think you? I put Ball was not rookie of the year. So he is the rookie of the year front runner by a lot right now, yeah. by a lot. Um, I like Halliburton a lot because he should be a piston. Uh, Halliburton's probably two. <clears throat> I've got Halliburton's two. And then three, I put down Anthony Edwards. Uh, I know he's not shooting great, but he's a very good scorer and. Remember that really cool dunk that he did over that one guy? Like you have to get bonus points. Yeah, it's awesome. So I have Edwards at uh, at three. I've got Emmanuel quickly at, at three. Um, who? Who? Emmanuel quickly. <laughs> What's Wait, his name? I think it might be quickly. Quickly. I think so. Okay, the dude from New York. Yeah, I, Isaiah Stewart's up there actually too. For real. Yeah. Like he's not S- top S- three. City Bays. City Bays. Sadiq Stewart. and Stewart are both up there. Um, Six man. Jordan Clarkson. By a lot. Yeah. He's one of the names I threw out there at the beginning of the year. I thought it was going to be Levert, and I'll stand by that if uh, Levert stayed healthy and didn't get traded, and got traded when he was injured, yeah. if Levert was able to stay healthy, he would have been six-man for that Brooklyn team for sure. Yeah, I agree. I think this is a pretty easy one. It's Clarkson, yeah. I've got uh, Boucher, two, uh, and i got uh, Gordon Dragic just as three. I don't have Dragic at three. He hasn't played a ton, but he's no. sweet. I've actually got Melo at three. Melo's been really good off the bench this year. Oh. Um, yeah, you can say Trez. Oh, love for the Wall Boys, eh? Wait a minute. Melo, as in the real Melo, Carmelo Anthony. Uh, Ball starts now. Lamelo starts now. Okay. So I have Carmelo Anthony, the really? only Melo. What kind of stats does he have? He's he's been really good. Really, he's had a few great games. Paul Morel will be all over that. He loves not a lot of defense, guys. Not a lot of defense for Mello. Shocker! He's never really played defense his whole career. Uh, he's still a really good score. He could score. Trez is up there. Rudy Gay for San Antonio is up there. But yep. it's Clarkson by a lot. Okay. Coach. Uh, Quinn Snyder from Utah, right there. I think they have the best record in the league, don't they? I think they do. We I disagree here. Okay. Uh, front runner right now is probably Snyder. Okay. Uh, it's Doc Rivers' award. You know, Doc has done a great job with Philly because they were not good last year, and they well, yeah, they were good. They yeah, weren't okay, this good, not this good. Uh, Doc is a good argument, uh, and Steve Nash from Brooklyn. I'm not sure he's getting much love, but managing that locker room in the minutes, you really haven't. Other than Kyrie deciding to take a vacation to whatever, um, they've kept themselves pretty quiet. So uh, all three of them have, have a good case, but. I think Snyder at this point depends on obviously how Utah finishes the season. Snyder's the front runner. I really think Rivers deserves it though, and uh, I Utah's going to fall in the standings. So actually, I'm going to say Doc Rivers will win it, um, but they need to, like they might need to win the East for Rivers to get it. They might have to pass Brooklyn. Steve Nash is up there. Popovich is up there with San Antonio. Like he's done a great job with that young team and Monty Williams. I didn't know who that is. That's the Phoenix coach, and Phoenix okay. is really high in the standings, so you have to say his name. All right. But it's it's probably Snyder, but give me Rivers. And Isaiah Thomas from the Pistons used to, like, take Doc Rivers to the playground and beat him like a little kid. Man. Right so think Atlanta? That, what's that? Yeah. 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 Isaiah killed Doc Rivers a bunch of times. Okay. Uh, movie swaps? Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, this is your kind of deal, so why don't you intro it? So we, we did one of these before, basically, uh, listener of the show, Parker Olette, said, dude, pick a movie and swap out the main character or one of the main characters with an athlete. So an example, like the last one we did was Forrest Gump. You can swap out with <laughs> any of the Manning brothers, Eli or Peyton, and they can be Forrest Gump, and that movie's still awesome. Cooper is the third brother. That, okay, the wide receiver, I think, right? Yes, and his son is lighting up as a quarterback I saw in, that. Uh, in high school. I don't know, CBS or I saw SI something. or something. Oh, that would be cool. So what we do is we pick a movie. Uh, the first one I have is Star Wars. So I've got someone cast for Luke, someone cast for Han, someone cast for Obi-Wan. So you got to get athletes, uh, old or new, and they can play these guys, and the movie is still either like awesome or equal value. So I did it a little different. I mean, I obviously like the category. So some of them I picked that are just fun swap outs. And some of them I did some lookalikes because uh, 
But it's funny. When I tell you some lookalikes, you'll be like, oh, that's true. Okay, so speaking of lookalikes, we'll just talk about the little racist issue we had last episode when we did this. Tal chose E.T. Yeah. And who did you cast as E.T.? Muggsy Bogues? That's got to be racist, man. I don't think so. That's got to be racist. I'm just saying. It's got to be racist. I don't think so. I'm pretty woke. Oh, man. <laughs> Stay woke. Okay. Stay woke. Uh, so I'll go Star Wars. This is my first one. Okay. So my Luke, there's a lot of guys you can get. Uh, I have Russell Wilson as Luke. I think Wilson would make a great Luke. Oh, that's a good point. I yeah, think I Russell like Wilson would be a sweet Luke. So Han, you got it some kind of cool, but a bit of a hothead. Travis Kelsey as Han Solo. I think that works for sure. Cool. Oh, but, that's a good one too. But like sometimes you got to shut up. And I think that's Kelsey. Now, Obi-Wan. This is a tough one. I put down Terry Bradshaw. I think current Bradshaw, like not prime Steelers Bradshaw, analyst Bradshaw, can be kind of old, grizzled, crazy Obi-Wan. I don't think he's smart enough, but it's a good one. He's pretty smart on the field. They used to make fun of him in the back in the days that you couldn't he couldn't spell cat. If they gave him the C and the A, and he said, I thought Kat was K-A-T. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Um, so, again, I did a couple different ones. So, Liam Neeson from Taken. Okay. We need somebody who's badass. I picked Kobe Bryant, just because Kobe could slide in there. I'll give you that. Kobe, rest in peace. And, right, the whole tie to his daughter. Uh, I got Kobe for, for Liam Neeson. That's a really good one. Thanks. I, I thought about that yeah. one for a little while. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> Shrek. Now, Shrek is an interesting one. <laughs> I have Shrek, too. You do? Yeah. Kay. Don't tell me. I have Shaq. Oh, that's good. Okay, a little yeah. racist, but okay. How is that racist, dude? I don't know. I'm just trying to say something because you made fun of me. Okay, well, who's your Shrek? Boban. Yeah, okay. I'll give you that. Yeah? I'll give you that. Um, okay, so then people watching, what you got to do is either text us or comment if you're on YouTube. What other movie guys you want to see swapped, and we'll do them in a future episode. So I have Shaq as Shrek. You have Boban. I think Shaq is better. Shaq probably has a better personality. He's re- I mean, Boban's goofy, yeah. but Shaq is funny as hell. But Boban can for real act, because he's in John Wick 3 <laughs> in the library. Like, he has a fight with John Wick. <laughs> yeah. Where Shaq has been, like, he was that weird superhero in that 90s movie, and he was, yeah. like, a cop in a couple movies. Um, uh, what was the one where he was the big recruit? Blue Chips. Blue Chips. That yeah. was a good movie. Blue Chips is solid. Um, I'll go back to the future now. Back to the future. For Marty, I want someone who's pretty cool, but can like play the part of Marty. So you, someone who's like chill, but not super laid back, kind of smart. Drew Brees? No, he's my Indiana Jones from last episode. I have Joe Burrow. As Marty. Oh, okay. I like and like that. age works out. Burrow's a kid. Like he could totally be Marty. Yep. So I have Burrow as Marty McFly. Now Doc. Thought about Doc for a little bit. I wanted an older quarterback who's not super old. Um, who's a little nuts, but like is pretty smart at what they do. Philip Rivers. Philip Rivers is a crazy man. And you put throw a wig on him, and he is Doc, for sure. Yeah. So I have uh, Philip Rivers with a wig as a little bit of a younger Doc with Burrow as Marty. Okay. So now some of mine are the lookalike ones that, Isaac, you'll have to do that picture-picture thing that you do. Cause that's kind of cool. Okay. So um, Chucky from the Terrible Horror Movies, John Gruden. Really? They're the same dude. Okay. That's good. And that was his nickname. I don't know if you knew that back in the day when he used to coach... Tampa, they called him Chucky. Uh, so Chucky and John Gruden. Yeah, that's kind of weak. Um, Wait till you see him together. I know, I know, I know what they look like. Okay. Uh, Blade. Now, this is a good one. So I wanted someone who could be like Badass. do the action stuff, but could deliver like funny over the top one liners. Dwight Howard. I think Dwight Howard could be a pretty good blade. He can do all the stunts and stuff. He's a, you know, you got to make the vampires a little bigger because Dwight Howard's like seven feet tall. But Howard, or, uh, yeah, Howard can do all the action and do all the funny one-liners. And uh, I think he can be blade. Okay, good. So, um, Austin Kutcher from Two and a Half Men. Yeah. Kyle Corver. When you see those two together, you'll be like, oh my God, that's the same dude. That's a good one. Yeah, and Kyle Corver, actually, I don't, you'll see him like he's got a good personality. He's funny. He could he could be an actor. We put him on the show. Can't. Looks like him and good fit. I think I win. 
Oh. Yep. Okay. Top Gun. So who can be Tom Cruise? Ooh. Who can be Maverick? Boy, who can be Maverick? So I'll be short, honest. tough. I kind of looked at. I didn't. I didn't go short, but you can kind of like. I looked at Maverick similar to how I looked at Marty McFly. Like just cool dudes. So I thought about some cool young guys, and uh, I've got Lamar Jackson as Maverick. I think like you throw some shades on Lamar, and he could totally be Maverick. I didn't get a goose, um, but Lamar Jackson, who's just a cool, chill dude, as Maverick from Top okay. Gun. Okay, I'll give you that. Um, so you're gonna hate this one as well, but Prince Harry, right? Because they're like actors now. Yeah. Carson Wentz. Don't disrespect Wentz like that. Wentz is so oh, much cooler than. But you know, look at them together. I know. Same dude. Okay. Have you ever seen Prince Harry and Carson Wentz in a room together at the same time? I've also never seen Prince Harry because I didn't watch the stupid interview. It's not my. It's not our thing. It's not what we do on the show. <laughs> Sorry, I just want everyone to be trying friends. to spread our audience. Yeah, like, we're looking. We're looking for the thirty to sixty year old white chick. <laughs> yeah, um, I've never seen. Prince Harry or the interview stuff, but I'm sure it's a good one. And Wentz is so much cooler than than that guy, I think. Uh, I've got two left. I don't know how many you have left. We didn't really talk. Uh, I got one four left. Okay. Uh, so you go. You do a couple now. Okay. So Clarice Starling from Sons of the Lambs needed a bad ass chick. You didn't get the the kicker, did you? The kicker? The female no, kicker? No, I don't Ray? know her name. No, Serena yeah. Williams. Tough, smart. Calculated Serena. So if we want to do Serena Williams, I would much rather her be like Sarah Connor. Or uh, ah, that's a good one or too. Ripley from Alien. Yep. I think that makes little, more sense. A little tougher. But uh, I'll give you that. Like, okay. Clarice is, is mentally super tough, but like she's not going to go beat down aliens. Serena Williams will beat down aliens and Terminators. Okay. So I've got another lookalike, but also would fit well. Uh, Jim Carrey from Dumb and Dumber, Pet Detective. I've heard of him, yeah. Uh, Rick Carlisle. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Look alike, but also Rick, he's a pretty smart dude. He, he uh, doesn't have the best sense of humor, so it would have to be probably one of the more serious ones. Um, like, uh, when was... Truman Show? Truman Show. Thank you. He could sub in that much better. All right. Uh, I've got two here. I'll go training day now. Training day is an interesting one. You got to get kind of a crazy guy... And then kind of a chiller, low-key guy. Crazy guy, DeMarcus Cousins. DeMarcus Cousins is Denzel or Alonzo. Um, he's nuts, but could totally be like a crazy crap cop. Jake, that's the uh, Ethan Hawke guy. I think it's Ethan Hawke. Who's the, the, like the younger guy, yep. first day on the job. Gordon Hayward. Gordon Hayward actually oh, kind of looks yeah, like him. Oh, looks a little bit like him and, and could pretty play, chill. Like yeah. chill and, and like, whoa, like what's going on? Like not super crazy. Or, or keeps, keeps us cool even in tough situations. Boogie Cousins will be nuts as Alonzo. Yeah. So I needed a baseball player. So I Will Smith from Independence Day. David Price, who's now um, a Dodger. They look a little like. He's pretty chill. He's cool, but he gets a little bit fired up in times of battle. David Price, former Tiger. Do Max Scherzer is like anything. Max Scherzer is so cool. Max Scherzer? As anything. He can do any any so, role. I was having difficulty coming up with Jason Bourne. Max Scherzer can do that. He can do anything. Yeah, he yeah, any Captain when America. Gets, yep. Max Scherzer. He, he can do that. Uh my last I one. love it when Scherzer gets fired up. Oh, if you just look up on YouTube like Max Scherzer Mad or like Max the, Scherzer that Crazy. Playoff game where he came in and struck out the side. It was awesome. Uh last one. Elf. Buddy the Elf, tall, dopey dude who's kind of funny. Boban crossed my mind, but I'm going to go with Nikola Jokic as Buddy oh, the Elf. Oh, that's a good idea. That's perfect. Like, if yeah. you put Jokic in that movie, he is he's going to be Buddy the Elf. And I think he has, like, he's pretty funny. I've seen some funny interviews where he's just, like, said dumb things or he's just has a good sense of humor. So uh, I like Jokic as Buddy. For mm-hmm. Love? Yeah, well, For Love for uh, Urban Paul, uh, UP Designs. Check him out on Instagram, Urban Paul Designs. Um, so that was a tennis shout out, but I needed a golf shout out as of well. Course. Right? Because yeah. sun ice, golf gear, golf season's coming up. Uh, Hugh Grant, Phil Mickelson. Same Just dude. And anything? 
Yeah, Hugh Grant in, uh, I don't know, the one with Reese, not Reese Witherspoon. Yeah, look up Hugh Grant movies. Look up Phil Nicholson. You'll take the picture, you'll put it together on an Instagram page, and then you'll agree with me. Okay, thanks. Trust me on that one. Um, so that's everything. You want to close things off? Um, yeah, thanks very much for support. If you want to uh, provide a topic for us to discuss, please out to reach out to Isaac on Instagram. You need some merch, same deal. Uh, Easter's coming up. You know, chocolate. Uh, merch. Get some merch. Have a good night, everybody.